Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Diana Ayala, and I am the chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I would like to welcome you to our vote today on two bills that will improve the regulatory landscape for businesses in New York City. We will be voting on proposed introduction 499A by Councilmember Koslowitz. New stands. Shh. Quiet, please. Thank you. We will be voting on proposed introduction 499A by Councilmember Koslowitz. New stands are some of the smallest businesses that we have in New York City, with some of the hardest working um, owners. Within the industry, new stand operators typically operate their new stands for up to 12 hours a day for often modest revenues. Most new stands are often uh, are owned by immigrants, and as consumers have increasingly preferred digital over uh, print media, the job of a new stand operator has become less lucrative. The pandemic and resulting stay-at-home orders have made it even more challenging for new stand operators to turn a profit for um, over the past 18 months. In response to the difficulties facing this industry, this committee will take action today to pass a bill to improve the conditions of those operating newsstands. Currently, newsstand operators are unable to operate a newsstand as a, co a corporate entity, such as a corporation or LLC, which means that newsstand operators must run their business as sole proprietors. This setup exposes their assets, such as their homes or co uh, college saving accounts, to personal liability if they are sued for example, and the inability to form partnerships also prohibits them from bringing a, uh, a family member or an employee into the business or sharing the cost of the stand itself. An employee who has worked at a new stand for decades is unable to, under the current law, to become a partner at the new stand and take over for the existing operator after they retire. Existing new stand operators have therefore advocated for the right to incorporate as business entities, which is an essential component of intro 499A. We are also voting on a proposed introduction number 1145A by Council Member Kuhl. Retail stores that sell things like food and non-prescription health beauty aids are required to comply with the city's rigorous uh, item pricing law. The law requires these items, with few exceptions, to be individually labeled with a price sticker. The item pricing requirement is a massive burden for retail stores. In supermarkets, for example, one of the dozens of items in a store must have their prices correctly labeled. Of course, labeling tens of thousands of items in a store perfectly is nearly impossible. Human error can lead to a few items being labeled incorrectly. These mistakes, however, leave store vul stores vulnerable to fines from DCWP. According to one advocate, creating an exception for the item pricing requirement would eliminate one of the biggest fines this industry sees. Intro 1145A modernizes the item pricing requirement without sacrificing uh, consumer protection. Under the proposed introduction, stores can only make use of the bill's exception if they provide product scanners that consumers can use to check the price of the item. The number of the scanners needed in each store would be based on the size of the store as determined by the commissioner of DCWP. Each shelf in the retail, uh, uh, wait, sorry, each shelf in the retail store will also need to list the price of the um, corresponding item. In recent years, jurisdictions across the New York State have taken action to enable retailers to use technologies to prevent stores from needing to label um, individual items. Similar legislation has passed in Westchester, Nassau, Suffolk, Rockland, Erie, uh, Resler, and St. Lawrence counties. I am glad that New York City will join uh, these other jurisdictions in taking common sense steps to amend outdated laws while at the same time not sacrificing consumer transparency. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on these important int uh, introductions. Before I ask the, uh, the clerk to call a roll, I would like to turn it over to Councilmember Kuhl to deliver an opening statement on his bill. Councilmember Kuhl. Thank you, Chair Ayala. Uh, today we are voting on my bill, Intro 1145. Uh, this is a small business relief bill that will expand the number of items at retailers exempt from item pricing requirements for individual pieces of merchandise as long as the store uh, makes price scanners available for the consumer. For years, retail stores have been forced to waste time and money on the labor-intensive task of using sticker guns on every single individual piece of merchandise on the shelf. 
I should know, as a pharmacist, I have, had to, I have had to do it for more than 20 years. The city mandates, this, despite a redundant state law that requires item pricing to also be displayed on the shelves, my bill would eliminate the sticker gun mandates and give retail stores the option to use price scanners, such as those already found at large stores like Target. This is one of the this is one of the DCWP's most common violations. And right now, those bigger chain stores are already ignoring this law and just pay the fine. They see it as a cause of doing business, but our smaller, often minority-owned businesses are not, are not as lucky. And by using barcodes and scanners, stores can more efficiently implement sales and discounts over, those, uh, over their own goods. This is also, there is also zero evidence that this bill would result in any sort of uh, job loss. We have asked for data, but there's none. Nassau, Suffolk, and Rochester counties have all been utilizing uh, this technology for decades with no reported job, uh, job loss. If anything, retail retailers are struggling to hire and keep existing employees at this time. This bill will allow small business this bill will allow small businesses to innovate and improve their business instead of having to scramble to comply with cumbersome and, and outdated over regulation. At the end of the day, we are in a retail crisis, and this is common sense step to clean up the law. The pandemic has caused a retail crisis that we have never seen before. Supermarkets and small business retailers continue sh to shut the doors, and this is one tangible action we can take to support them. We have all thought about wanting to help small businesses. This is how to do it. For supermarkets in particular, this bill will save them from unnecessary burdensome fines that big box stores are able to absorb as a cause of doing business. This DCWP has voiced their support of this bill, and I urge uh, my colleagues to do the same. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Ku. Uh, I will now turn it over to Council Member Koslowitz to make a statement. Council Member Koslowitz. We'll get you a mic. Thank you. On December 11, 2001, the City Council passed Intro 0968-2001. It was a bill that I introduced on December 26, 2001. Mayor Giuliani vetoed the legislation. Because this veto occurred five days from the end of the 1998-2001 legislative session, the council did not have the ability to consider an override. Today, almost 20 years later, and I'm still here, <laughs> the council in considering intro 499 is essentially considering the same bill as intro 0968. Intro 0968 contained le le language authorizing raising the limit on the dollar amount a newsstand operator could charge for an item. This increased dollar limit was achieved during the Bloomberg administration and therefore does not appear in intro 499. Except for the raising of the dollar amount, intro 0968 and intro 0499 are basically identical. Currently, only an individual can obtain a newsstand license. This bill would permit partnerships, companies, and corporations to obtain 
a newsstand license as well. Why is this important? Because it would enhance the ability of immigrants to obtain a newsstand license and thus become entrepreneurs. There are approximately 300 newsstands in operation in our city. These newsstands are overwhelmingly operated by immigrants. That is operated but not owned by immigrants. By expanding ownership to partnerships, companies, and corporations, the current personal license holder would be given the ability to bring in the operator as a partner. And when the current license holder retires or passes on, because the definition of ownership is to be expanded, the immigrant operator as a partner would have the ability to become the sole owner. On, or the immigrant operator would have the ability to buy the license from the licensee under current rules. This is not possible. Thank you very much for this legislation. It means a lot to me. We're, we're ending the year and my term in a very good way having this bill passed. And also, Peter Coo's bill, item pricing was also my bill, and it's fine with me to change the r rules of the uh, pricing of each individual item. So I'm very happy today to have these two bills in front of us to vote on. Thank you, Councilmember Kosslowitz. Uh, I will now ask the clerk to call the roll. Good morning. This is the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. Roll call vote on proposed intros 499A and 1145A. We'll start with Chair Ayala. I vote aye. And Council Members Chin. I vote aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye on all. Koslowitz. Happily aye. Lander. Menchaca. Brannon. Aye on all. Jaeger. You may. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I vote aye on all. I want to just briefly explain um, uh, very quickly on introduction 499. As I said uh, at the hearing on this matter a few weeks ago or, or thereabouts, uh, a bill that passed under the Valone Council is good enough for me, and Councilmember Kostowitz's uh, uh, sponsorship of this bill is good enough for me, and no further explanation be needed. So uh, it may be 20 years too long, but we're doing the right thing now, and I support that bill, and I vote aye. On 1145, uh, I've spoken frequently on the floor of this council um, over the last four years about how the Department of Consumer Affairs monetizes and weaponizes our statutes for the purposes of punishing small businesses in this city. Um, and this is a, a righteous uh, means to somehow take away their punishing uh, tyrant behavior on the small businesses in New York. I would actually uh, do this a little differently uh, in, this, in the portion that we are uh, adding to the statute, uh, the language that said, as determined by rule of the commissioner, I would delete that and put in our own rules. Because when we pass these blank check statutes and give them over to the department to pass rules uh, that they thereupon weaponize for purposes of tormenting our small businesses, that leads to the place where we are today, trying to fix what they've done. So I commend very much uh, my colleague, Councilman Koo, and all the sponsors of this bill, um, and I support them, and I vote aye. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Chair Ayala, by a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, all items are adopted. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is now adjourned.